Now you step over here. Can yeah, you step back? Can you step back? Are you going to cordon the area off? What's up, right. Castro? Will you step back? I already got you on YouTube, dude. dude. Don't step, touch me. Step that's, back, That's dude. a simple battery right there. Step Are you back. kidding me? I step just back. recorded you. Step don't back. touch me. This is a public sidewalk. I don't have to step You're back. Part of the investigation. I don't have to step back. Cordon the area off. Put some yellow tape up. This is a public sidewalk. I don't have to go anywhere, stupid. You're, you're I don't have to go anywhere, you're stupid. I don't care. Cordon it off. You don't like it? Cordon it off. Put up some tape. Touch me again, I'm gonna go file a complaint on you, Castro. I'm gonna foil your body cam footage. I got a body cam on too, stupid, and you touched it. You just fucked up tonight. Can you please back up, sir? I don't have to back up. Put some tape up. Okay, we will. What's your name and badge number? Johnson, T. Johnson. 20122. What was it? I just told you. 20122? Nope. Okay, I'll go back and look at it and then blast it on Facebook and YouTube. I'll be sure to send it to your superiors too. Post it on your Facebook page, all that good stuff. I'm out here doing First Amendment constitutionally protected stuff, dude. You can't say nothing to me. You're fine over there where you were, I just don't appreciate you behind me. I don't care what you appreciate. Okay, I'm telling you right now, you need to step back. That's it. I'm not asking anymore. Step back. I'm standing in a place I'm legally allowed to be. Step back. This is a sidewalk. This is the last time I'm asking you to step back, sir. Sir, right now we're trying to conduct a criminal investigation. Okay? You're interfering with that. I do don't continue to walk off, you can record. Just record from back there, okay? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Can you get your hands off Keep going. Right there. Okay? I don't want you any closer than this to record, okay? Thank you. Fuck you. Hey, Direct D, this is Andre in El Paso. I got a channel called Horizon City News Service, and um, I'm basically making a follow-up video to the 10-minute video that you put out um, in the last 24 to 36 hours, the video you recently put up. Um, I found a news article I just wanted to read to you and anybody who's watching this, and it uh, deals with you know identifying yourself as a passenger when you're um, in a detained vehicle in the Ninth Circuit, which is Arizona, California, uh, Oregon, and Washington, which is where you live, Arizona. So uh, let me just read this article to you guys, and um, I'll put the link below down in the description box, and we will just, uh, you know, or it'll just be some extra information for you and anybody who's watching this, um, I just thought it was a, a good article for people to to keep in mind, and you know, it, it could uh, be like a stepping stone to researching other information if anybody's in, interested in that sort of thing. So anyway, this article is from um, a couple of years ago, um, back on February sixteenth, twenty nineteen, and it was uh, from the Arizona Central dot com. And the title of the article is, Can Passengers in a Traffic Stop Refuse to Give an Officer Their ID? And uh, you got your picture here of this Arizona State Trooper on the passenger side. And uh, who knows what he's asking, but maybe he's doing that exact thing. Maybe he's asking a passenger for their ID. Who knows? But anyway, anyway um, <clears throat> this deals with Arizona. Um, it talks about the Ninth Circuit, but this actually... Is speaking specifically about Arizona, so it's right up uh, your alley, Directy, and anybody else that you go around doing your um, cop watching or other government audits with. So here's the uh, article I read it to you. It's written by Lauren Castle from ArizonaCentral.com, AZCentral.com, and again, it's from February 16, 2019. So she writes, if you are a passenger in a car pulled over in Arizona, refusing to give an officer your ID, does not, um, does not automatically give the officer permission to drag out the traffic stop. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, which oversees Arizona and several other western states, recently ruled that law enforcement cannot extend a traffic stop because a passenger refuses to give their ident identification unless the officer has reasonable suspicion the person has committed a crime. The traffic stop in Arizona. Alfredo Landeros was sitting in the passenger seat of a car near the Pascua 
Yaki Indian Reservation near Tucson in 2016. According to court documents, a pack pas I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, Pascua Yaki police officer pulled over the car because it was going 11 miles over the speed limit. So that's uh, tribal police uh, for that reservation. During his testimony, Officer Clinton Baker said he smelled alcohol and thought the two women in the back seat were underage. The Pascua Yaki Indian Reservation has a curfew for minors. So this Officer Clinton Baker, he doesn't sound like he's a Native American. I don't know if he's from some other agency, but that's what the article says, Officer Clinton Baker. Um, in addition, the driver, the officer asked, in addition to the driver, the officer asked for the identification of the women. He discovered the women were 21 and 19. According to his testimony, Baker said he did not believe Landeros was a minor. Nonetheless, Officer Baker, in his own words, commanded Landeros to provide identification, the judge stated in court documents. Landeros refused to provide his ID. When officers continued to ask, he continued to refuse. The officers commanded him to exit the vehicle. That's that Pennsylvania vs. Mims case you were talking about on your video, Direct D, which of course is exactly correct. Are you driving? Don't give him your ID if you weren't driving. Then don't give him your ID. Reasonable articulable suspicion that you've been committing a crime. If they don't got it, you don't got an ID. You're a passenger. You're secure in your Fourth Amendment, your property. I'm out here making sure they're doing shit right, and that ain't right. You're the passenger. Don't ID. You suspect this man of a crime? That's the only way you're getting his ID. Failure your ID is a secondary crime. I'm here, man. Civil rights. Constitution and the Supreme Court. What I'm doing is called a First Amendment protected activity recording them. Making sure they're following all the rules. Asking you for ID. He's allowed to ask you, but you don't have to give it to him. Yeah. Pennsylvania versus MIM says if they ask everybody to get out of the car, you guys got to get out. So you know, yeah. The only authority they have is over the operator of the vehicle. You don't gotta talk to them, answer questions, all the fake nice bullshit. Uh, so, going back to the article. Baker testified that after Landeros got out of the car, he noticed pocket knives, a machete, and two open beer bottles near the passenger seat. Landeros was arrested on suspicion of possessing an open container of alcohol, failing to provide his full name, and refusing to follow orders, according to court documents. He was never charged for having an open container. While Landeros was being searched, the officer found a smoking pipe and six bullets inside Landeros's pockets. Nearly three months after his arrest, Landeros was indicted for possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. He entered a plea agreement and was sentenced to 405 days in prison and three years of supervised supervised release. I don't know much about the legal system when it comes to sentencing, but that sounds quite harsh to throw someone in jail for 405 days and three years of supervised release for a few bullets in their pocket, but I guess that's how the system works. So now going to the court case that went up to the appeals court, which is the court just below the Supreme Court which is the highest level most cases ever go because to get in the Supreme Court is very, very difficult. Almost no cases actually make it there. And this case is United States versus Landeros. So apparently it was a federal case because it's United States. It's not Arizona. It's United States versus Landeros. Um, so I guess he got federally charged. So here's the uh, article or this portion of it. All right. The Ninth Circuit addressed whether the police can extend a traffic stop and if law enforcement can require a non-driver to identify themselves. 
Again, remember this is for the Ninth Circuit. So if you guys are watching this from Texas, Michigan, New York, Florida, this doesn't apply to you, or it could or it could not, but specifically, whatever is said in this circuit, in this Circuit Court of Appeals, deals with Arizona, California, Oregon, and Washington. And by what I what I mean when I say things in this case could apply to you, I mean that there might be similar rulings in your circuit, but whatever is decided here in this circuit, that's for just those states, Arizona, um, California, Oregon, and Washington. I believe that's the Ninth Circuit. I know Arizona, California, Oregon, and Washington. There might be one more that I'm not thinking of, but I know that those four are in the Ninth Circuit. So anyway, um, <clears throat> you know, just just keep that in mind, whoever's watching this, is that if you don't live in the Ninth Circuit, oh, that's another thing, Alaska. I believe Alaska's in the Ninth Circuit. So if you're from Alaska, this also applies to you, I believe. But again, I just want to make that very clear. If you don't live in the Ninth Circuit, whatever's being read here might not necessarily be the exact same laws in your circuit. Keep that in mind. The law gets complicated, so just keep that in mind. All right, so... Let me start from the top again. United States versus Landeros. The Ninth Circuit addressed whether the police can extend a traffic stop and if law enforcement can require a non-driver to identify themselves. In its opinion, the Circuit Court, the Court of Appeals opinion, the court stated that wanting a passenger's identification is not part of the mission for the traffic stop. Things that are part of the mission include checking, for, checking the driver's license, checking for proof of insurance, and making sure the vehicle operates safely. Regardless of whether the, full, the first request for Landeros' identification was lawful, law enforcement's refusal to take no for an answer was not, Judge Marsha S. Burzon stated in court documents. Also, the court said Baker did not have a reasonable suspicion concerning Landeros, so therefore violated the passenger's Fourth Amendment right. The amendment protects a person from unreasonable seizures. The government argued the officer did have reasonable suspicion because of the smell of alcohol and the possible breaking of curfew, according to court documents. However, the court said it was not reasonable because Baker did not believe Landeros was underage and because the officer said he asked for his ID because he thought it was procedure. Also, Burzon stated in court documents that knowing Landeros' name would not have made the officers safer, and making the stop longer could actually put their safety more at risk. Burzon, Burzon. Right, so Burzon is the judge, like I said earlier in this article. Judge Marsha S. Burzon. So she's an appeals court judge for the Ninth Circuit. So that's what Burzon said. She said that Extending the traffic stop would actually put the officers more at risk. And that's something that I want to just go over one more time because you have a United States Court of Appeals judge for the entire Ninth Circuit saying that. So that's that's pretty, pretty significant there um, for anybody who's listening to this. All right, so now the section, what are your rights? Tempe criminal defense attorney in Tempe, Arizona. Russ Richelsoff. I hope that's not how you pronounce it. Uh, Tempe criminal defense attorney Rush Rizzlesoff offered some tips for traffic stops in Arizona. During a stop, a passenger should be quiet and let the driver talk with the officer. According to to Rizzlesoff, some officers may ask for everyone's identifications to check for warrants. Drivers are required to provide an ID because they need to prove they can drive in the state. Passengers are not required to produce this information. Rachel Soft said, if the officer asks for identification and the passenger passenger does not want to provide it, they can say, I'm not legally required to identify myself to you, Rachel Soft said. However, Rachel Soft advised that people would not get into arguments with officers on the side of the road, especially about legal matters. People can assert their rights by not wanting to answer questions without a lawyer, but should do so in a polite way. Traffic stops are stressful for officers who don't know what they may be walking into. He said, he advised that he advised those in the car, try to keep the officer as comfortable as possible 
to help ensure the situation doesn't escalate. And that's the end of the article. If you want to reach out to this reporter, her name is Lauren Castle, and she's at Lauren Castle or Lauren dot Castle at Gannett dot com. And uh, Gannett is the same company that owns USA Today, and they own many, many newspapers around the country. And like I said, this report is from AZ Central. So there's your article. I just thought it was uh, a good follow up to Direct D's video that he put out in the last 24 to 36 hours. Um, he just recently put it out. And uh, so I just thought that this news article would be a good follow up to the video he just put out. So, you know, just some extra information for anybody who uh, was interested in that video. And, um, you know, if anybody wanted to research anything regarding the stop and ID laws for Arizona or any other <coughs> part of the country, um, you know, this would be a good jumping off point to, you know, just get some extra information and have a jumping off point to do further research wherever it is you're headed with your research. All right, guys. So that's the end of this little video. And um, I'll just uh, keep on doing my cop watching here in El Paso. And I hope that Direct D and all the people he does cop watching with over there and in, uh, I believe in Tucson. Uh, but wherever he goes in Arizona, I hope that the same experience that James Freeman had doesn't happen to him and his friends. doesn't happen to Direct D and his friends because I don't know what was going on that day with James Freeman, but um, the state troopers were getting real aggressive and definitely have no idea about what the First Amendment's all about. So hopefully uh, things like that don't happen to Direct D and, and his uh, cop-watching friends. And uh, time will tell. We'll see how this goes. And, um, you know, I, f I feel his pain when it comes to flashlights coming in his eyes. I have that happen to me over here. So I, 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 know, I know what he's going through. All right, guys. Well, I'll be in touch. And, um, yeah, anybody who wants to do research, that's what this article is for. You guys have a good day.